Barb is a neighbourhood support worker who is employed by Uniting Care Wesley in Adelaide. A few years ago, Barb was asked to visit Colleen, a woman in her early 80s, who was experiencing considerable depression after the death of her husband. In her working life, Colleen had worked with socially isolated people, but now she was the one who was lonely and felt useless. Colleen made it clear to Barb that she believed that she had nothing much to look forward to and frankly, didn't know what life was about at this stage. Now, Barb is not really interested in offering services. Instead, Barb believes strongly that everyone has a great story to tell and gifts to share. We just have to take the time to listen. Barb noticed that Colleen had half a dozen extremely fine knitted tea cosies on her sideboard. Not just ordinary tea cosies, but ones with knitted butterflies, bees and gardens on them. About that time, the trendy tea bar had opened in Adelaide. Barb asked Colleen if she could borrow a tea cosy to show to the tea bar, as she thought they might be interested in selling such wonderful tea cosies. Colleen agreed, and the tea bar were delighted. They bought some, and they sold really quickly. Barb went back to Colleen, saying that she had found a market for the tea cosies. Well and good, said Colleen, but I don't really need the money. Is there some group in Uniting Care Wesley Adelaide which could do with the donation of the money? Barb knew of another worker in the organisation who was doing a fabulous project with women with an acquired brain injury. These women were getting together to create a quilt, with each panel made by an individual woman. The panels were well underway, but the next step was a bit unclear. The worker was most appreciative of the prospect of the donation. Colleen went to meet the women and felt really inspired by what they were doing and in great admiration of their courage in dealing with their disability. The tea cosies kept selling and Colleen could not keep up. So Barb put the word out among some other older women who were experiencing social isolation. They became the Cozy Club. They got together once a month to swap patterns. Later they all occasionally joined in with the women with acquired brain injury. The Cozy Club has become a very active and committed group, supporting various projects and forming lasting friendships. Colleen and Barb were later asked to present to a national conference in Sydney to tell the story of the Cozy Club. Colleen said that she had gone from having nothing to do, from feeling useless, to not having enough hours in the day. This is a simple and profound example of ABCD. Barbara noticed a simple tea cosy, Colleen's talent, and had found a place where this gift could be expressed. The difference between offering a service and noticing a talent moved Colleen from being an isolated, lonely older woman to telling a story at a national conference, finding a place of connection and contribution, and touching the lives of many others. Every single person has capacities, abilities, gifts and ideas, and living a good life depends on whether those capacities can be used, abilities expressed, gifts given and ideas shared. This is our training space where up to 200 women train every week. We have quite a large percentage of women who are 40 and above who train with the circus. They've come and become involved with no previous background or experience in circus and they've come for a variety of reasons. They've come looking for a sense of community. They've come looking for a, a wish or a hope that they become more physically able. They come looking for the idea of building skills. They come looking for a sense of belonging. I've got a very strong relationship with a woman in our community who is quite a wee bit over 40. I think she might be getting up to 70. I'm not the only person that um, respects and admires this woman. Um, she has a big impact in all of our community. Um, she's representative of someone who has broken barriers and challenged stereotypes to be who she is as an older woman. So, no Rogers, 
is someone who is 70 years old just about and a very valued and highly respected and admired member of our circus community. I have three sons. When my eldest son David died in 1997, I was overwhelmed with grief and felt as if one third of my body had instantly been cut away in one great swathe, leaving a gaping black hole. Having joined Women's Circus in 1999, I discovered POW, joining POW Circus in 2000. In this wonderful group, I found friendship and fun, support and a new identity. Regular training and exercise, released stress, curtailed arthritis and depression, a changed life. We told our stories, learnt new skills and how to perform, created shows, sang and danced, celebrating the strengths, qualities and wisdom of older women. David's story has been included in one of our shows. So now, the emphasis for me is not the loss of David, rather the survival and healing that I have gained from POW, a recreation of self. The strength of a community is directly proportional to the level that the diversity of its residents desire and are able to contribute their abilities and assets to the well-being of their community. People who are involved in community renewal and economic development have known this forever. Communities that use artisans, creative people, people on the edge are the most economically and socially successful. Take time now to look at the handout, Nine Key Community Development Principles, articulated by Peter Canyon. Share examples of when you've seen these principles working within your own experience. Please end this session with a discussion around these principles. I hope you have enjoyed sharing stories and exploring the sugars, flowers and butters of ABCD. Next session we'll start to look at what communities have to bring these principles to life.